We have Eric Weigel. Weigel? Weigel? I like Weigel. Let's, Let's go, go with Weigel. Weigel. Playing Weigel? green, white, uh, very interesting deck. It's got a Thrag Tusk and Angelic Skirmisher. And then a lot of 1, 2, and 3 drop aggressive creatures. We got four Smiters, four Silver Wave Paladins, two Center Healers, with the spell package of Forge, Slesnia Charm, which I really like right now, and four Rancor. And what's Brian got? Brian is playing uh, the Nicotine Jones developed Black, Red, White uh, Umbero Rights deck. If you've been following Modo, you've probably seen it picking up steam. Uh, yeah. I know. Uh, about like a week, week and a half ago, it had a bunch of results in a, in a couple daily events, a lot of four Yeah, it really months. showcased at the mocks, right? The standard mocks yeah. about a month ago. Uh, I was trying to play a brew in that one too, it did not work out that well for me. <laughs> Alright, Temple Garden drops Eric down to 18, and I think we're going to see a Mad Acceleration creature. Maybe we'll see a Dryad Militant. Ooh, we could mm -hmm. see a Dryad Militant. You are, you are right, it is Absence Pilgrim. I mean, Brian? when you see a Sacred Foundry, I don't think you're that worried about yeah. uh, about reanimation spells. That's true. Amusingly enough, though, that's exactly what he should be concerned with in this yes. matchup. That's a Searing Spear, uh, the FNM promo, I believe. For a second, it looked like Punishing Fire, and I'm like, what's, what's going on? My world, it's coming down around me. That would be excellent against his one Near Heath Pilgrim. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so, we have backup Pilgrims, just in case one got lost. Yep. And, uh... Brian's hand looks pretty land heavy here, but, uh, but he does have a faithless looting now too. What does that card do so. to land heavy draws? Huh? What does that card do? Oh, to, uh, oh it changes them. It changes I don't know them. if you know Brainstorm. Uh, that's a pretty good magic card. Let's it's turn some cards into others. See, I never know. I always, I always fetch wrong. Oh, well, well, that's I a just, tricky part. I just get to know what my next two cards are going to be. <laughs> All right, he gets rid of a couple lands, face the suiting, setting up a Liliana for next turn, or a Falcon or Rushcrowd, if whatever, whichever one he decides. Yeah, I think uh, that's a Vault, or is that a Lingering Souls? He, he has a Vault in his hand, I believe. Okay, because that's a Lingering Souls. I do not think that's in the correct zone. Yeah, that's true. He could have gotten a lot of value discarding it to Faithless Looting. Uh, one of the things I like about Brian Hardy's list is it, you know, this is one of the decks in the format that makes use of Rakdos gear, and a card we saw a lot early on uh, in Standard, and it's kind of like just disappeared. Yeah, very it, it was very scary for a long time, and... All right, yeah, the entire triplet Abyssin Pilgrim draw I do not think is exactly what Eric's deck's trying to accomplish because he does have a bunch of three drops all the way up to Silver Hearts, Thray Tusk, Angel, uh, Restoration Angel, Sigardos. I just love this in one Angelic Skirmisher. <laughs> we drew a second vault, which is uh, definitely not ideal. Now, uh, you, it turns out you were right. That vault wasn't in the wrong zone anyway. <laughs> uh, he's sending in the Falcon at the Aristocrat, going to get Eric down. So 14 start a little clock. One that Thrag Tusk is uh, ill-suited to racing. Now, now we should definitely see something happen. Uh, we have six mana. A Locks and Smiter, Sagarda, and a Restoration Angel. Our, our last turn was interesting. Yeah. I feel like almost any of those creatures would have been a lot more interesting to deploy. And we could also have played a Silverblade Paladin as well. Hmm. Now we've got some decisions, mostly over whether you know we play the shockland untapped to get into damage, which seems ill-conceived against a falcon wrath. We put into play tapped and play. Well, I think we want to. We, we can deal with damage. We can. It's a. It is available. Yes. All right. So Brian untaps. Can threaten a trade. That Liliana looks pretty bad right now, especially with yep. the threat of a smiter. Uh, we're not going to be able to sacrifice because of the Sagarda ability of spells and, and abilities your opponent's control cannot cause you to sacrifice permanence. Uh, but he's willing to trade a Sagarda for a Falcon Wrath and his entire turn. He's probably just going to be stuck on Faithless Looting this turn, I imagine. Well, if uh, Eric, or Eric does take it, I feel like I want to time walk my opponent. You don't? You would you would block with the Sagarda here? I don't know. I mean, we get rid of the Aristocrat. We force his entire turn. Well, we can't animate the key rune and sack it. But that that won't kill the Sagarda. Sure, that's fair. So then we just like brickwalled him, and he lost a key rune. I, I don't disagree with that assessment. All right. Eric clearly uh, just sensing something's up here. Perhaps he fears a bonfire for one. However, sure. you know, if Brian had a bonfire for one, I think he would have played it ages yeah. ago. So. But so we just saw him bear rights discarding uh, an, a, a uh, faithless we discarding a barrier rights and a lingering source, yeah. which he will make now. And now we're in trouble. Well, Sagar is obviously not going to be able to race that Falcon Wrath Aristocrat very well, so it's probably going to have to go on defense, and Vault of the Archangel will make that a pretty ill suit. Especially now that there's creatures in play. I liked forcing that play because there weren't any creatures to do anything with. Sure. Because Aristocrat is a very difficult card to deal with. 
Do you uh, think it's possible Brian should maybe have Fatal Swing before combat just to... No, because then he can't attack. I, I know that he maybe can't attack, but I mean, we don't know his list, actually. We should well, look at that. I, all I can say I'm, is I'm the checking. players made decisions and none of them would have been mine. That's fair. And I, I don't, I'm not saying that they were correct or not. I'm just saying that, like, I wouldn't want to waste my turn with that Aristocrat when I have Larian Souls in my deck and I have right. Fatal in my graveyard. And I would have snapped off that trade. I, I agree if I'm Eric, I would be blocking there. I, I think that if I'm Brian, I wouldn't have attacked, though, so it's no. kind of interesting just that we're in the position. Uh, it looks like he's going to try for Silverblade Paladin and hope to yeah. chop his way through Lingering Souls, but yeah. Mania Mage has well, tried that uh, Oh, I, that I saw him tapping one man. I thought that was all he was going to do, and then we would have had a Rancor. All right, Smiter comes down. Should have saved it. He should know that Brian has a Liliana in his hand. <laughs> Psychic powers not online. Alright, so all Brian has to do is if he attacks and any blocks happen, he can give his team uh, Death Touch and Indestructibility, which will allow him to kill the first striking 5-5. Five five. Yep, if he just sends the Aristocrat. Yeah. Rancor is definitely one of the cards that uh, Brian just has to concern himself with here. Yeah. Uh, it's the only thing that can really break through his wall of spirits, and with the Vault to gain him life as he attacks, probably not too worried. Uh... Well, that casting of Locks on Smiter felt foolish. I'm not sure what we're planning to do with Liliana here, to be honest. Uh, we're like, going I mean, up. We're, we're going up, but like, I feel like our, atta our attack was just much more productive. The fourth pilgrim in the yard. Fourth pilgrim. Served his master well. All right, so it just says go. At a minimum, you could, you know, make the attack first. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's relatively risk-free. All right, so Eric draws, hoping for some powerful spell. I would take an Angelic Skirmisher. That would be a sweet power position. Angelic Skirmisher would do a lot of work Rinker here. Rinker also would probably be game. <laughs> Rinker's a little more conventional, and at, because we just missed that attack, I, I think it's enough to race. Now, I definitely like this attack from Eric. He does have the Restoration Angel. He knows he can get aggressive. Mm -hmm. One creature gets through. Woo. I approve. Do you think I... your opponent wants to trade spirits for pilgrims here? Like... Not really, no. Not against a double striking cigar. <laughs> I, I think sending everything's totally fine here. I like this attack. Yeah, Brian, uh, you know, let up the pressure for a turn, and that's given Eric a, a chance to try and reverse the momentum of the game. All right, so we're going to get there and block there, and we're going to take two. Uh, this is going to give him... Okay, yeah, so everything's going at Liliana except for the Paladin. So Paladin's now, going at Brian? Okay. Restoration's going to blink that out, probably continue to pair with the Sigarda. They seem like good best friends. friends. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they want to change relations. It's interesting that he attacked the Liliana. Uh, well, you don't want that thing, you know, taking that last card in Eric's hand. He does have another Silver Blade. Or it's going to take it anyway. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, he could never really get rid of it. Faithless just to mill over two cards. Ooh, a Lingering Souls. Yeah, a Lingering Souls and a Searing Spear, the other card that we discarded. Now, what does Searing Spear splashback cost? Uh, it doesn't have one. It right. does not have it. Unless okay. the past has become particularly a flame. Oh. Yeah. I've seen that a couple times. Really? The past become a flame. Oh, I thought you meant past, past and flames with Searing Spear. Because <laughs> that would be a neat one. <laughs> I mean, I know that you've been known to brew pretty deep, but uh... not mostly with guys. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not the spell kind of brewer. Uh, what? Brian appears to be in the tank. He, he actually tapped uh, pretty awkwardly here with the Dragon Skull Summit over ev every other land that produces red. All right. Can no longer use his uh, Rakdos Key Rune on defense, which it's uh, particularly well suited to dealing with Silverblade Paladin. Should that guy decide to? take a trip over again. Well, I do, yeah, I mean, I can see that, but I also think the vault is going to be important, potentially. Sure, but, you know, you can keep open both. Mm -hmm. It's a free roll. Yeah, he definitely is just trying to find... And that's another problem with this deck, is, like, a lot of the creatures that you have for the value rights aren't actually that good to bring back. Yeah. They're not the high hitters. Uh, it's not... I mean, obviously, Brian did not think he was going to see a Sigarda. Even though Sigarda is such a powerful card, no one ever thinks they're going to play against it. It's true. I think Brian was really hoping to hit an Aurelia or an Obstat with that Faithless yeah. Looting, but that's actually pretty tough to do. Uh, he also has access to like one each. Angel of Serenity and one Olivia Voldaren, both of which you know would be pretty high impact. Gavany Township for Eric is it's a big game. That That'll is, that make is very good. everything much harder for Brian. Uh, the board is rapidly degenerating to this point where he's just not going to be able to come back, barring his Singleton Blasphemous yeah. Act. 
All right, so yeah, now we're gonna chump block the Restoration Angel, take down one of these pilgrims. Um, we're gonna protect the aristocrat and gain life, so he will end up only taking uh, three damage depending on if uh, Eric activates Township, which I think he should since he's hellbent. Yeah. So which which means he has no cards in his hand. So, so you've been walking around a lot while they do this combat. What what's been the sweetest deck you've seen so far today? The sweetest deck. Because my... we're we, I I'm I think I know what I'm playing for the Invitational, but I wouldn't mind something spicy and seeing something this weekend since it's the last weekend before the SCG Open in Atlanta featuring the Invitational. My favorite deck of the weekend was actually the deck we featured round one, Louis Laskins. Oh, uh, Louis, that is sweet Night, deck, Nightshade yeah. Peddler, is it Staticaster, Boros Reckoner, Ground Assault Blaster. And he's Act still deck. alive, right? No, he just, he just lost. lost uh, 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 that put him to two losses and out of top eight contention, and rather than played out for any money, decided he wanted to take that last round and go sleep. Big time. Sleep? Yeah, he, he dropped and went to the room. He's tired, had a long day, didn't get much rest. Wants you can't to come back all be a baller, baller, man. I know, I know. I grind it out. He'll, uh, he will be back tomorrow. I've actually asked him to come in early so we can get the deck tech because cool. uh, I didn't want to have to hold him. Oh, and that's yeah. true. We don't have to worry about legs tomorrow because it is a double stand. He gets another crack at it with yeah, the deck. That's right. Yeah, gets another shot. He, he loved playing the deck. He's very excited about getting to try it again. He right, wants so to play some more ground did assaults, he keep, I know. Did he keep a card in his hand or did he play a land? Uh, I believe he kept a card. He had, I think, all those lands in play before. Yeah, he had all the lands in play already. Oh, is the Faith of Sudden still in the graveyard? He just drew a new one? Yeah, I think he's flashbacking, and now he's saying, like, I'm, I'm flashbacking this one, but, but I there was confusion the because, yeah. Hand. Well, that's an Olivia. It is an Olivia. It might be too late, we have We have definitely seen many Olivias this weekend, just too slow, too late. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where this format's going. The card just is not doing what it's supposed to be doing anymore. Uh, which could be a very good card at the Invitational, I think, since it's going to be more mid-range. But it still has an uphill battle to deal with in the format. Sure. Just sure. too fast. Olivia's just trying to touch and turn everything into vampires, and the format's just way too fast. Can't keep her hands on anything. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's deciding uh, what to keep here. I imagine he's locked in on pitching the Faithless Looting. No? Oh, he's, he's going to go deep. Well, I don't know what that Faithless Looting allows him to do. He has to find another Lingering Souls and try to find something yeah. to embarrass. It's like, and that Olivia's not going to win him the game. I guess it makes sense to bin it uh, if you're not going to cast the Olivia. He is at 23, so like he can take a pretty big hit. But now, if you're in his position, do you just like loot now, so then yeah. next turn you can flashback if you drew, and, and then on Barrow rights? Yeah, we like just flashback just... Lingering Souls and then looted. We should definitely have done that in the opposite order. It's just free information. No, I mean it's not. It's not like All you're right. going to do anything else with that three mana. I mean, you could potentially threaten to keep your... No, uh, I guess you couldn't keep your key because you have a vault. Nope. Yeah. Well, if we had tapped differently for our flashback Faithless Living, it could have mattered. Uh, Brian's, I think, being a little casual with his mana here in a game where he's actually tight on black, which could very easily wind up costing him in a specific spot. I don't think we've hit one of those spots, but we have denied ourselves a, a few small opportunities. You and your small edges, Glenn Jones. I, I can't help it, man. I like I've I've always you know really focused on tapping my eyes. I feel like an idiot whenever I get it wrong. I agree. I, right nowadays. I, I agree. I feel. Like <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I definitely agree on like. There's some place sometimes where I play around things and my opponent's like, well, I couldn't have had that or it couldn't happen. I'm like, yeah. yeah, but like this is just the optimal play. Right. And I just get used to making the optimal plays. Now, yeah, you better send that cigar. You better send your whole team, buddy. Right, so he's still wary. The only card that I can think of that would kill him is like peeling if he attacks with Sigarda is like peeling an Aurelia, right? Like No. That wouldn't be enough. Yeah. Oh he's at ten yeah, now. He's I was a, thinking of the twenty three. Yeah, yeah, he he could get him. And a, a peeled Aurelia is fourteen points even if he loses all of these spirits chump blocking this turn. So uh Brian's got uh what we colloquially refer to as outs. Yes, there are some <laughs> outs. Um, all right, so I think Cigar is half attacking. He hasn't decided yet. We're going to see how blocks go first before we decide. Ah, uh, well, that, that version of Cigar sounds way better. <laughs> Ghost Cloak Cigar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so blocking everything, eating the Absence Pilgrim.
Yeah, eat some of the pilgrim. Looks like we're declining the township. Uh, no need. Which, it's, yeah, it's we're not, not getting through any damage, so. Do we have an actual spell that we're we going to cast have an instead? Spell. Healer. Oh, 14, still good enough, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good thing we held back that cigar, though. All right, let's hope. I want to see a big top deck. I want to see a Faithless looting. Sweat it again. <laughs> All right, let's see a Faithless. We have an Umbrera Rites in the Graveyard stuff with Ryan, so we could potentially still see some big, scary monster hit the board. Yep. <sighs> that Aurelia was an Aurelia. So note that Eric's play, conservative though it was, has kept him alive. Yes. Against Brian's draw. But it's still too little too late. Aurelion D is not going to get there. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. We'll, we'll have to see, I guess. I don't think he can... Yeah, if he plays the Aurelia, he won't be able to survive uh, an all-out attack. So he's going to just play this Boros Reckoner. And basically just try and wash, rinse, repeat his last turn. But with Boros Reckoner instead of Lingering Souls. Yeah. You know, Eric played really conservatively last turn, so we have no reason to believe that he'll, you know, get crazy now. Yeah. All right, so Eric top decks. I'm still waiting for that Rancor. Yeah, Rancor would change everything in this game. It would pretty much just immediately So did it. we activate, did he forget to Township? Well, he cast Centaur Healer instead. Oh, excuse yeah. me, yes. So I'm a little slow, like... I'm slow because of that burger. <laughs> Whoops, we've revealed our draw of Sun Pelgrove and played it, mid played it during <laughs> combat, yeah. It's cool. So now we send just our flyers. Wow, this is actually, this is exactly what right now, is it no, Eric just, just, just dead. dead? Yeah, you just put Falcon Wrath Aristocrat in front of that Sigarda, throw the Boros Reckoner away to keep it around, untap. Just take the, oh yeah, we have to because it's a, yeah, wow. We just, Eric you suddenly just switched into, you know, I no longer have a flying blocker, I'm just going to go for it, and Brian has... Actually, just gotten the win. If, he, uh, like, okay. if he sees it, <laughs> all right. <laughs> he he appears to be very concerned about this, but you know, his opponent's hellbent. So he has no He's flyers to play. Sure. I could understand being a little weirded out, you know. So like, you can't possibly kill me. It's it's physically impossible, and I can kill you. And just like yeah, he just like did the hand gestures. Like all right, like yeah, just do take yours. it. All right, it's cool. Well, so, I take 11, I go to 12. No, right? he takes way more. It's Silverblade. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yep. He takes 16. I forgot the, uh, the Soul Bond on Sigarda, so he goes to 4. And he has just straight up lethal. Assuming he sees it, that's that's all he needs. I mean, I'm pretty sure he sees it. He just drew the Blasphemous sack too, I think. So he could actually <laughs> have like gotten out anyway. But Multiple yeah. different ways. I mean, he could if that is the Blasphemous sack he drew, he could just kill his opponent with that. <laughs> All right, that's game over. I think Eric realized it right away. Yeah. Yep, it is the blast attack. He's like, yep, still had all these. <laughs> oh, he didn't cast it, but still showed it. Yeah. I would have hid that one. Uh, all right, so with sideboarding, what is Brian going to be doing? Because that's the more you, like, green, white, egg we've seen before, but black, white, red for a lot of you at home, you might not know this deck. So uh, what do you think he's doing out of a sideboard? Uh, we have, from this sideboard, it's kind of an interesting one. I'm not that experienced with this deck, so I don't know exactly what's going to go on. I think for sure the second Blasphemous, Blasphemous Act is coming in. Uh, the Tragic Slip seems like a no-brainer as well. Mizia Mortars. It's weird that he hasn't, but the Knight of Infamy is also yes. seems good. I very much agree. That was the one I was going to go to next. I think Knight of Infamy yeah, so definitely comes in. Brian it's a great answer to two Smiter. random Knight of Infamies, probably for the Blitz matchups. Like, just having... Well, I'm curious why they're Knight of Infamies and not just... Uh, what's that card called? Uh, Bloom Surgeons. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know people are liking those. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure, honestly. You know, because the, the red removal deals with both of them, but that card still hits like the burning tramissary. So that's that's an unusual one in my mind. Uh, I like the two near Heath pilgrims to go with like the reckoners or the aristocrats or things like that. But um, I think like all these cards have the potential of being good in this matchup. Uh, over on Eric's side with the green white deck, the only things I can think of that he's going to do is he could potentially bring in face shield. Um, for some weird, unique plots, but I think the acidic slimes are going to be big. I, hopefully, he brings those in. They're very good. The three tusks are not that spectacular in this matchup. No, no. Uh, it's a good time to have Wolfers, Silverhearts, and Cigars. Yeah, yeah. All the flying creatures mean that Brian can just race a Thrag Tusk, whereas something that actually affects the board more positively, like Cigarda and Wolfers, Silverheart, those are really tough. 
I think I would bring in some quantity of face shield. I don't know about all three. Dude, you got to give protection. I, I would want one or two. I mean, we've so, seen it, you know, be useful in a multiple in multiple ways. Like in that game, forcing through a Sagardo, like past mm -hmm. lingering souls, could have definitely mattered at, at one stage. Something like that. So, I would want access to it just because my deck doesn't have enough tricks. I want to add some. Yeah. And acidic slime. I agree with you that it, it seems pretty strong. Mostly as a way to take my opponent off a of Vault of the Archangel, mm -hmm. which is a, a really powerful way to race things like Wolfier Silverheart. Mm -hmm. Definitely agree with that. Um, it's very unusual. Like, all of Brian's creatures are technically fatties, but only a few of them can hit by the Slezian Charm, so I'm curious if Eric's going to keep all those in. Yeah, I feel like I wouldn't want to keep in all of them. I think that's what I would cut for the Faith Shields, because they can both serve that pseudo-protective yeah. role against some spells, but Faith Shield obviously uh, protects you from far more things. So that, that's where I would go with that. Yep. All right. And I just want to get Angelic Skirmisher online. That is just something I want to see. I got to play with that last week in <laughs> Pittsburgh at the GP. And, <laughs> excuse me, and that was just an unbelievably amazing card. In a limited environment. I'm curious what it's like in standard. But I do have to say, first strike blockers, vigilance into first strike is, is very powerful. Very true. <laughs> very true. <laughs> Man, that, that game was... Tight, it was very unusual, race, yeah. yeah. I, I, it was really strange to, that Eric, you know, suddenly changed gears. I think he's, you know, regretting it now, and uh, his demeanor, you can kind of see, he's like, why did I just, just change my mind? I, yeah. I knew I needed that flying blocker. Especially when all of his ground pounders were still just very powerful creatures. Yep. Yeah, even an all-out attack on that turn might have... Uh, I don't know, I'd have to like go back and do some math to figure it out, but an all-out attack possibly could have forced Brian to put himself in a much more awkward position. It well, feels he like he just it, blocks one and then He, he sacks blocks one and sacks. sacks, but I don't know if he's like still taking lethal There's, there's no way. He was at 23 life, and he's taking roughly five a creature, six a creature. So, yep, that's fair. No, yeah. I think you're right. There were only five guys, so it makes sense. Uh, so it would have been functionally identical, I guess. Like, yeah. As these players shuffle up, how excited are you for next week at the Invitational? I'm reasonably excited, you know. Well, I mean, there's Ascension Terms. Aren't you a big Ascension fan? Well, yeah, but I'm not going to be playing in them. You can sneak away. You need to be, you know, oh, man, the I've... Immortal Tournaments. You get Immortal There was, there was a time and a place when I wanted my Vanity card, and I didn't get it for so long, so now I, you know, I'm, I'm jaded to it. You're jaded to it? I'm jaded to the concept. Although, if you are you know, a game designer and want to make a card of me, I would totally think that that's cool, so I guess I'm not oh, that wow. jaded to it. Oh, wow. I see what you just did there. <laughs> if you're a game designer, <laughs> any of you out there, <clears throat> who, who are you trying to... Yeah, know. yeah. Is big, P. Big Sully? Games. No, he's PTQing. Yeah, P. P. Sully is in a PTQ, uh, a large we one. We might have Kibler. Heard. We might have Kibler. At the, the Costa Mesa Women's Center, I believe, is... Uh, that's where the PTQ is That is at? where his PTQ is. Yeah. Interesting. Fortunately, spacious enough for uh, most of the players who showed up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we've got our hands. Let's hope Eric does more than play three Absence Pilgrims on consecutive turns. Yeah, that would be significantly better. Although, to be fair, it was it was realistically likely enough to win that previous game if we played slightly differently. All right, both players are going down, but that's some that's what Brian wants. Green white decks would mulligan well, much worse than the ones of Faithful City and Barrel, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, Brian certainly won't mind his opponent coming out and with a slower start. And Brian is the reactive player in this matchup. He, the time he's given is dependent on the green white aggro. And because of that, if green white's mulliganing, he gets more time to set things up. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I mean, I played Ascension a little bit. But, like, it's so cool that there's just going to be a whole other crowd at the Invitational. Like, yep. I want to meet those guys that actually just come for the Ascension tournament. And, you know, like, it's a scratch your back kind of place. Like, you can learn Ascension if you're a Magic player, you can learn Magic if you're an Ascension player. Everyone's just there to game and have a good time. The Atlanta Convention Center that we go to is awesome. I love it. Like Cedric said, there's a Chick-fil-A right across the street. Yeah, I, I know, like, personally, I'm pretty excited to help out in the game. Uh, Ascension's a sweet game. Stumbling Entertainment, a company full of sweet people. We've obviously at Star City been, you know, allied with them over a number of things, like advertising campaigns. You mm -hmm. see their sites, uh, Kibler. One of the designers for Stoneblade writes for our site, of course. Oh, yeah. uh, so you know, yeah. If you're putting it, if you enjoy fine gaming and complex strategy, uh, you're probably gonna enjoy some of the Stoneblade Entertainment games. Soulforge being their uh, new product. The eye that game confuses me. Out. It's, the, I their like AI it a lot. is good. Is it? it well, it's better <laughs> than me. <laughs> All right, I might give you that. 
their AI is it is an impressive AI. I, I'll be honest, like yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't, I don't consider it like you know especially challenging or worrisome. Well, well, but AI yeah, usually is yeah, like not usually existing. just you know crush them. Uh, yeah. But it's it is of a class that most games in its uh, yeah. in the same industry do not match. So I actually I actively enjoy playing against the AI. It's not something I just do because like I don't have anything better to do. Yeah, you know if I'm like sitting there, I'll just you know decide I want to play against the AI. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about the Soul Forge update. They actually have added their starter decks now to oh, uh, wow. to the game and redone and updated it so you can play with more of those cards. If and I win a Soul Forge tournament, do I get my likeness on it? Not not card? yet. I'm sure that will be an option in the future. To be totally honest, well, I hope it will. Seems likely. Yeah. It seems like the uh, the kind of thing the guys at Stoneblade like offering. And then that's true. I mean, everyone talking about I want I want to be on a token. Mm -hmm. All these people. Well, actually, at the invitation of this weekend, the winner will also be on a token. <gasps> That's true. Yeah. You, 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 did you, do you like Let's my do, do you like my token? <laughs> yeah. Do you like the Brad Nelson token and the Jerry Thompson? Well, you can also be on a token yep. if you win the Invitational. IQs all over the place. Even at the Open, whoever top hits the tournament gets qualified. So anyone from here can go to Atlanta, which is very close, yep. and yep. play next weekend. And these players might just be doing that. Might be trying to get their qualification to go to Atlanta next weekend and do sure. battle. And the, and it's loose competition. It's like I'm there. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean uh, Brad Nelson, an Open Series tournament. Steep competition. You've never <laughs> had an easier match. Like, you could actually probably do worse playing the bye. <laughs> um, some pit I'll grow for Eric on his mold of five. It's going to be a rough start for him. Uh, what was, is that a white primordial? Huh? What was that card in Brian's hand? It's near Heath Bell. Oh. He started on Godless Shrine. It looks like he's lacking on red mana, but he has a Rakdos key rune to yeah. fix that problem. So, yeah, easy game. I think I see an obs out there. So Brian, uh, looks like he's going to be coming out of the gates pretty quickly. He's, you know, got the potential. To and all the Eric's doing is slowly setting his up. And now this is a matchup where you do not want rest in peace. I think Eric brought it in, but that's one of the big advantages of Black or Red is it's such a misunderstood deck. Yeah. And you, your spells you're animating are not seven or eight mana. They're five, four, and six. You know, four, five, and six. So he did miss a line drive. He's going to kill that pilgrim, but. Um, you don't need a graveyard to function. True. Near Heath Pilgrim, we got the beats. Both players a little stunted here in this game. Uh, Brian's on six cards, Eric's on five. With double rest in peace. Eric's on three. <laughs> yeah, pretty rough. Yeah, rest in peace is a complete blank against Brian currently. Uh, none of the cards in his hand are We hit mana, we hit Reckoner, and this is looking really bad for Eric. Pair. Uh, Walking Lightning Helix. Yeah, <laughs> depressing 2-0. Uh, I don't really know how you can get out of this. If he draws a land, he doesn't do anything. If he draws a creature, it's too weak to deal with his board position. Yeah. It would require a significant series of running draws and... Starting with a Terminus. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Looks like Brian, uh, you know, still still not developing as fast as he could be. He has a Rakdos Key Room. Yep. And, you know, he really doesn't have to do much. Eric will be dead in short order. Yeah. And we're building mana to, like, every land slash creature is ticking up to that Blasphemous Act. Yep. Something we've seen quite a few times already. This will be the, the third time it was potential. All right. Eric's like, I, too, can play this life game stuff. <laughs> but here, if we see a land, we see an Amzadot. Yes, there's a land. There's an Amzadot. Yep. Uh, I think our, yeah, I was about to say our life was a little off, but Brian's is not really relevant in this game as it's going to be over in his favor pretty quickly. Yeah, I, uh, I, can't I would not play it first. I think I attack with a Reckoner. Yeah, he's probably, he probably can't block, I guess. I don't know. He also has an Aristocrat. He can play that and still retain the ability to gain first strike. It looks like that's yeah. the play he's going to go for, which I think that's a totally fine line as well. It's like, you know. No. Obsidat. Everything points to, to the win on Brian's side here. It's hard to... I'm not sure what's the exactly correct play, but... I like attack first. I do too. I really feel like there should just be a rule change because of Obsidat that you can just put it on top of your library. Yeah. Like, that's, diagonally. That's interesting. Like, how I did it at the GP, no one argued with me, is I put a dice on my library, but then I leaned it on my library. Okay. I just leaned the opposite up against my deck. 
Just, I, mean, I obviously never want to miss that. Yeah, I mean, look at how good it is. It's every it. turn. It's especially spicy we're playing, with hey, we're, we're counting. Under. We're counting. We are exactly. We're doing it the cool way. How blasphemous! Uh, I, I think it was a pretty good matchup for Brian in general. Although, like, like you know, we saw in game one, it seemed like game one should have gone Eric's way, but post board it gets very tough for him. I mean, it does seem like a good matchup, but you know that changes when you just play a turn two smiter. That all changes, right? Mulligan to five. I, I don't know if the Cyberman was correct, but like, turn two smiter is very powerful 